make a pit stop for all things NASCAR with the Four Tire Change Podcast. Here is your host, Dawson Iserlow. It's the Four Tire Change Podcast, and we are back. Welcome in, Dawson Iserlow here with ESPN Southwest Louisiana. The NASCAR Cup Series, a week that did not really return to normal, so to speak, after, of course, what uh, happened the week before with Austin Dillon and the penalty. Michigan International Speedway, and we get another rain-affected race. Been a while. We, we had a nice little run of luck here, but, of course, uh, back to the beginning of the season with NASCAR and just feeling like they can't catch a break when it comes to these types of situations. Or maybe they're the ones not creating breaks for themselves. I'll explain what I mean with that in a minute. But appreciate everybody for tuning in. We had some great uh, turnout on our last pod, and that one was a long one. Talked to Chris Fasaro about everything that was the Austin Dillon incident. So we're going to be a little bit shorter this time around, but still... Uh, we've got some stuff to cover. This was a race at Michigan that, you know, going into it, you knew, look, the, the playoff cut line is starting to be of the utmost importance. Um, there are some drivers, Bubba Wallace, Chris Buescher, Ross Chastain, who are right there. You know, if Ty Gibbs and or Martin Truex Jr. had a couple of awful weeks, they could find themselves on the wrong side of the cut line as well. And, you know, from there, can somebody start to really create themselves some playoff momentum? And, you know, Michigan, not necessarily a track where you've got a ton of you know, similar style race racing surfaces in the playoffs where you really have to worry about something like that. But still, opportunity to bank some more playoff points and the regular season championship still fully in play for, you know, a handful of drivers, really three or four still could get there, uh, including obviously uh, who we're going to talk about in a minute, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson. Um, but you also throw in some of the other competitors that are near the top. We know Chase Elliott's been in and around that line as well. And so, you know, with all that being said, the whole thing, thing going into Michigan for me was, A, were we going to get any more sort of drama fallout from the Austin Dillon situation, which for the most part we didn't, um, but B, could we get some of those surprises, and, and could we get a Kyle Busch, and from different portions of this race, it felt like Kyle Busch might be there, so we start this race, and then the rain comes, you know, here's my thing, I understand it's for TV purposes, and I get that, and I understand that the TV contracts, if you look at the dollars and cents that are associated with them, NASCAR has to obey what the TV partners want. I, I get that fully. But at some point, shouldn't the TV partners as well look up and go, if we don't give ourselves some flexibility and some opportunity here, we're not going to have a race at all on Sunday. So from a TV standpoint, now I know... You know, I don't know the intricacies of how that works, but wouldn't it be better to have a race at noon than to not have a race at all on Sunday? And then you're racing on Monday morning instead of, you know, law and order reruns. I, I just, I don't understand why there's not that flexibility. The forecast was bad all week. I know sometimes the forecast is bad all week and then it completely changes. I get it. It's weather. You can't control it. Um, but this one was one of those where you said that forecast doesn't look good, doesn't look good, doesn't look good. Oh, it is what we thought it was. And now we're not racing. And, oh, we're not going to race at all tonight because we started this thing or we tried to start this thing at 3 p.m. Central. And now we don't have time because there's no lights in Michigan. So I, at a track that doesn't have lights and there's rain in the forecast and it's late summer where you get a lot of these showers, is that really going to kill the ratings for us to do a, a noon, 1 o'clock start? I, I don't know. But that's not what they did. So we waited this thing out. Monday was when the race was. That's why this video is coming at you a little later than usual because the race came at you a little later than usual. Um, after the restart, you get things going. There were some different cars that had made some, uh, you know, some moments there. Look, Michigan's been interesting in the next-gen car. It doesn't race fully like a, a plate track or like a drafting track, whatever you want to call it these days. But it doesn't really race like a mile and a half either, and it's not. It's bigger than that. It's kind of in between. They, the cars stay bunched up to an extent, but they still kind of spread out. It, it's, it's unique, I think. And it's not like it fully wasn't like that before, but... Um, just felt like it's a little bit more so like that. And, you know, there was some cars that really had a chance here. But what I want to fast forward to is when you have some strategy change in the second half of this race. And as you're coming through these final green flag pit stops, uh, Kyle Busch takes two tires and gets the track position. And I had it written down. I thought this was maybe going to be one of those big time moments because we've seen how many times this year have we seen tires not matter, right? You know, at certain tracks. Now, They've obviously tried to change that, and the Richmond experimentation with the three different sets of tires uh, certainly played out and, and was different last week. But this was a, a deal where I thought two tires might hang on here, and Kyle comes out with the with the um, track position. His pit crew does a fantastic job, one of the fastest stops I've ever seen for two tires. 
And he gets out there in the lead, and I thought Kyle Busch was, was going to win this thing. And imagine how crazy that would have been. He extends the win streak, which, by the way, he still hasn't done yet. He's won every race, or he's won a race in every season of his career. And he's not going to get this thing unless he wins now in the, in the playoffs or in these last couple. But uh, anyway... He gets that track position. I thought he was going to hold on, and he just couldn't do it. He just did not have the speed that these other cars had. The two tires seemed to affect him a lot. And Tyler Reddick is the one who comes out of this thing. And look, Reddick, and I, I had some texts with our guy Chris, like, is Reddick going to pull this off? Because he's, you know, kind of choked away a few this year, and he's been very critical of himself in the post-race interviews when that's happened. But Reddick gets out in front, and for the first time in a while, Reddick is cruising. And he does not fault. You know, he does not have any big faults late in this thing. He does not choke at all. He pulls it off, and Tyler Reddick wins at Michigan. And so what I think that means is momentum for him in the playoffs and maybe just a little bit of self-belief back in, in that 45 team. They've been putting fast cars on the track every week. Tyler Reddick is one of the most talented drivers in the series. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But for him to get the confidence to actually pull one off since it's been a while, and you know, I know he had one previously this year, but we talked about the opportunities that he didn't miss out on. I thought it was really big for the 45. McDonald's gets back into victory lane. Been a really long time since they had a paint scheme win a race. Not that that is uh, super significant to the playoffs, but all that into consideration. A little bit uh, disappointing. Michael Jordan there wasn't there. He was there on Sunday, but he left because of the rain and didn't get to see his driver win. But regardless, 23-11 gets a win, Tyler Reddick gets a win, and now he takes over the regular season championship in points. That is all subject to change because they're going to Daytona this week, and we know that you can get any kind of wild card of a result at Daytona. Before we get to that race, let's talk about the playoff cut line. Ross Chastain, Bubba Wallace, one point separates them, and then it's Chris Buescher who's 16 points to the good. But really, those guys are racing for one spot. I... Chastain, you know, it felt early on in the season like they were just going to be solid enough to not really have to worry about the cut line. Um, you kind of thought for a long time, or at least I did, like he would be where Truex is right now, 77 up to the good, like not all that close to being in danger. Maybe if he had a couple disastrous weeks, it would change. But that consistency went away for them, and they haven't found a way to win a race. And, you know, look, Trackhouse, for all the praise that we've given him over the last couple of years, and I think plenty of it is warranted, They've got one win this year, and it's at Atlanta in a crazy finish. It's not like they have had race-winning speed all that much. Now, maybe there's a couple chances that Chastain had. Suarez has been much better of late. He's actually been kind of the opposite of um, Chastain, where he started to really find some good top five, top ten finishes. But um, Chastain's got to figure something out here. And out of those three, Busher, Wallace, and Chastain, look, you're going to a place that Bubba's really good at, at Daytona this week. And, you know, I know... Chastain has had some success at those types of tracks, and Busher has as well. They all have been fine there, but it's Bubba's specialty. So I feel good about where Bubba is, and if you can avoid the wrecks, that's the thing for those three. Now that we're not finishing at Daytona, because as we, we now transition into our preview, remember, the last race of the regular season is next week at Darlington. This week at Daytona is the penultimate race. That was a little bit of a change in the schedule because of the Olympic break and everything else that got uh, switched around. If you can avoid the big wreck, if you're one of those three guys, you, you got a good chance that somebody's going to get caught up in something, right? And so I think, and by the way, that is what brings, if everybody gets involved in something, that's where if somebody's way back there, they can at least kind of put their name into the conversation. Or if all three of them run well and Truex or Ty Gibbs struggles, then you start to say, let's not fully wrap up that situation. But all that being said, um, the battle between those three, I think Chastain's in a real tough spot. Uh, because I, I I really expect Bubba to run well, and Busher has a little bit of that buffer. So let's see what happens. As far as a race winner, man, I I thought about chaos. I almost picked Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in this thing, but I'm not going to go all the way in that direction. I feel like with uh, some of the desperation that's going to be involved, I actually think that favors one of the guys who's in a good spot points-wise to kind of make it through the wreckage and win this thing. I think Ryan Blaney, that 12 team, been executing pretty well of late. They've had a chance to win a couple more races than they've even won. Give me the 12 team to win at Daytona. And um, as far as that point situation, like I said, we'll have our eyes on the 23 car, the 17 car, and the one. And we'll see which of those three, if not all of them, can execute at a high level at Daytona. I'm excited for it. It should be a fun one. Um, you know, look, it's the Saturday night Daytona race. That's what, we, uh, that's what we've come to love. It's not the last race of the regular season, at least for this year, which is going to kind of have to shift where our mindset is. But it's got uh, equal importance just one week earlier. So that should be fun. Appreciate all the support. Continue to like, comment, subscribe if you're interested. Four-tire change. We keep rolling along.